Hello, welcome to Ton TV and the Greenup Morton weekly update as sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers. As you can see, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by interim manager Anton McElhone today to talk through a few of the things that have been going on at the club. First of all, Anton, thanks for coming in today before training. Appreciate it. Um, big news this week, signings. Yeah, so obviously two signings, we've managed to get a, an attacking player who can play anywhere along a front three, you know, can play through the middle, can play left through right. Kaz Sterling, obviously young player from Tottenham, known for several years. The clubs that have been at at Bradford, New England, always kept an eye on him, what he was doing with those. was always a great loan option. He's had some fantastic options. He's been at Sunderland, Doncaster, you know, so he's ready to, to, to move away from that sort of level and, and try his, his bit up north, see what he can do, score some goals and try and reinvent himself a little bit. So that's the idea that we hopefully can get goals and, and really put himself in the map up here. We get a really, really good response, as you could imagine. It has to be said, it's a bit of a coup for Morton to bring a player of that quality. Yeah, it is. Listen, for how he's done in his loan moves, he's, he's had some tough luck. You've got to make your own luck in your loan moves. Has you get the quality? Lots of it. He's got pace, he's got energy. He will come up here, he gets his opportunity, and hopefully can score goals. That's The, the coup for the club is, is if he does well, does it lead to then a few more players in, in the, the years to come with loans? That's the idea that we can hopefully build a good relationship with the club. We did speak to him the other day, briefly, as to be yeah. said, because yeah. he's a man of few words. Yes. But I guess he's one of these guys that's going to do his talking out of the park. Of course, you know, it spoke to his mentor, John McDermott, who's head of FA, technical director. Gives a glowing reference, you know, what he's like. He's a steely, determined player. Doesn't want pampering. He'll come up, he'll roll his sleeves up and he'll get the job done. So... Hopefully, all goes well. You've been talking for a while about getting, I don't want to use the word backup goalkeeper, but you want no. a second goalkeeper yes. in. You want somebody with experience, and you also want somebody that could maybe help out in terms of bringing some of the goalkeepers of course, through. Of course. And you've got that with Jamie Butler. Yep, so Jamie was again using that Tottenham link. Jamie was a, a youth team reserve team player at Tottenham many years ago, then went out on his own, played at the highest level in non league, like Sutton United, Dovers. He's played at high level, lots of games under his belt. He was a free agent. So it was one of these things, it was a really simple thing, especially with COVID and what's going on, that somebody that's not married, not got family, maybe got a house, you know, so it was, a, it was an easier move. St still, it was tough to get him up because things needed to be sorted, but he's got great talent. He will come in and push the keepers. He will want to be number one. Like, like, that's his mindset. I want to come in, I want to be number one. He knows what he's here for is to one challenge Aiden. Aiden's been phenomenal this year, mm. but to keep Aiden pushing and going in the right direction, give him some assistance, give him some guidance as well. Monday to Friday is important, we've not been able to give him that since obviously Tim will left, so it's, it's really important. And also for the squad, it's important to have cover and balance in all your positions, so I'm delighted he's coming. He's a bit of a personality as well, is he not? Yeah, yeah no, listen, he's a, he's a London lad, he's, he's confident, knows what he's doing, knows his strengths, knows his weaknesses, and he'll come up and he'll not say it as it is, but he will be fully into integrating, you know, he's not going to be slow and quiet, and but he's been around, he's 28, 29, you know, Jamie, so he's, and he's been in good changing rooms, he's played at a good level, so he comes in and he just brings that personality with him. What do you want to do, what to get better, what to be improving week in, week out, so you will add to that, and as I say, on the coaching side, he's not the goalkeeping coach, yeah. but he's going to lead the goalkeepers as the experienced goalkeeping coach, Chris Flockhart, will continue in a match day to, to then take the goalkeepers, whereas Jamie's then goes on the bench and so on. So, obviously, you've added to the squad. Yep. That's important to you. But equally, we had a significant loss last week with, with Jim. Your thoughts on Jim McAllister? <sighs> Listen, there's words can I describe what he is as a, as a person, as a player, husband. You know, listen, he, he, he's done everything for this club. I think that the fans are, will be grateful for the service that he's gave. Everything he's done for the age he is, at the end of his career, he is he's still like a young 20-year-old, the way that he goes around his business and... You can't replace him. So there's no point saying, look, we'll go like for like. Listen, Jim's Jim McAllister, and, and, he, and he deserves that. We've then got to find solutions that we can then improve the team and develop the team in different ways. Midge will come in and he'll do his bit. Other young players will be in Amar. We've got Luca, we've got Reese. It's now for them to take their opportunities and step on and then try and build their legacy because Jim's just left one hell of a legacy behind at the club so he's left the position in a better place first and foremost and that's that's what we want players to do here you know if you're, if you're going to move on what can you do and you, you, you leave it in a better place you said it yourself difficult 
to fill the boots, obviously, but you've now got a decision to make. Ah. Have you made a decision on who your club captain is going to be going forward? Uh, yes, so obviously Sean McGinty has been the club captain for the last few games. Gintz has been fantastic. He's been in now for over a year. He's got real leadership qualities, great age. You know, he's not one of the young ones. He's not at the, the wrong end of his career. He's at the right stage. You can see he's had a great season this year. He's a leader. He's been at a higher level as well and wants to get to that level with the club. So hopefully that he leads the, the club and pushes them on and he's well respected within the change room by me, the staff, and I think it was the right choice. He's done really well, Gintz, hasn't he? Because he came in, as you say, this time last year. He, did, he played a few games right up to the yeah. lockdown, which wasn't that far. And then there was that kind of gap where people were saying, well, what's going to happen with Sean McGinty? Is he going to stay on at the club or whatever? And here we are, rolling a year, and he's now your club captain. Yeah, I think that when, when we watched him last year at Thistle, we thought, you know, real de demanding, you know, centre-half, he's heading balls, playing the right balls that you want. He's aggressive, good talker, he can move, he's no slow. We thought, look, that's the sort of player we want at the club going forward. And, and we were lucky the gaffer done everything at the time to get him into the club. So it's been fantastic. And he's settled in now. I think that like, any player coming to a club, change. He's part of the, the, the furniture here now. He knows what's expected and he pushes and drives everybody on as well. He's another leader. You know, we've got the Kyles, the Lewis Straps, the Mids, the Brian. You know, that's, that's another leader there for us. Don't want to dwell on it, mm -hmm. obviously, but you and I have talked about it as well in the past week. The last sort of three games, the margins have been really, really tight. Yeah. But as you said to me the other day, it's one point out of nine. It's not really acceptable for you. It, it, it's not acceptable. What I would say is, is you look at Wraith Rovers. They've lost two out of their last three. Nobody's going to say they're a bad team. Mm -hmm. right? We are not a bad team. We've created. What we've not done is taken more opportunities. So nothing each. A uh, broth, back post finish, Robbie Murray, Dan Lewis strap. That goes in. It's a totally different game. Yeah. Uh, you, you look at the... The game in the Wednesday evening, you can't ask for any more. You're down to 10 men. You, you don't have your skipper as well, you don't have other things, and you come out remarkably with a two each. And some teams get on, you know, like we could have maybe nicked a little win there. The Queen of the South game, the, the players were hugely disappointed, as, as was the staff. We, we, we threw everything at it, all the stats saying that we could have and should have got something out of it. Mm -hmm. Fadin Nesbitt takes his back post finish, yeah. it's a draw, or you could have maybe went on and won the match. But most importantly, are we making chances? Yes. Are we doing the right things? Yes. It's up to the players to make sure they take the opportunities. And if we do that, we'll, we'll climb the league. The thing is, is to be consistent, to be calm, not to panic. If you look at the eight games that we've done, we've been consistent from that and also for the start of the season, that picking up points, picking up points. Sometimes it's games that you're not expected to win. Mm. The games that we should have won, there's no guarantees. We, we know how hard these games are going to be, but we need to make sure we do the right things in both ends of the box. Can we finish more often and can we stop going in? If we do that, more points on the, the table on the board. In this division, any game can go either way. What do you think the challenge is going to be from Wraith Rovers tomorrow? Challenge? They're going to throw everything at us. They have, they've been in good form. They've obviously been off as well with COVID. They've got a young, energetic team who are as good as anybody in this league. Let, let me tell you that. I think there is... You've got hearts who are the, the favourites, but Wraith Rovers can't underestimate them, they've got it, wide areas up front, mid they, they play the game the right way, but they have lost two as well in the last week, mm. they're going to be tired, let's see what they've got coming into the game, they've got maybe a few players that have been missing, they'll come back, but we owe them one because of what happened the last time, let's make no moans and groans about it, you wear this jersey with pride, you know, there's... there's you know, the fans that have passed away, Gordon McNeil and stuff. Sure. You want to make sure you do everything for the guys that can't get to watch and can't get to do stuff and wear that top with pride like Jim's done mm -hmm. and go and show them that's never going to happen again. So hopefully this weekend they, they will turn up and they will show them what it is to play for Green and Morton and go and get wins. Finally, Anton, if you don't mind me asking you this, because a lot of people have been saying to me, they've watched you develop and grow into this role. Mm -hmm. How have you been enjoying it? Listen, I really enjoy it. I enjoy being on the pitch with the players. I enjoy trying to make them better. At the end of the day, it's up to players to take the, the opportunities and go with it. I think what we've done is we've been consistent with our messages, consistent in giving them what the, the, the shape of the team, just to give them that balance. There's not a, a change. We'll obviously change within matches at times, as we've seen the last game or two. But people have been given minutes. I think probably 90% of the squad have been given opportunities to play your Reese Lyons, your Calvin Orses, Camus Kells, more recently your Craig McGuffey, 
Gary Oliver are getting a chance and they'll be continue to get their chance and see where it can go. Everybody's then got to take the opportunity. It's going to be tough now. We've brought in another striker, so that's more competition. Then the goalkeeper, that then takes somebody off the bench. So take the, the competition and we want to see that, it's going to get tougher. But if you want to do well in life, you've got to keep pushing and pushing the envelope. So hopefully players respond well and we, we keep developing and see where it goes. Listen, you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate you coming in this morning before training and talking to us. And listen, good luck with this weekend. Much appreciated. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, as you always do, on the Green at Morton Weekly Update. As sponsored by McTears, the auctioneers.